taller, were narrower and lighter than the key one reviewed way back in phone show 309 a year ago, the unimaginatively named key two is a superior device in every way. From materials, aluminium and rubberized plastic, to the taller matte finish keyboard from the camera zoom optics to the upgraded chipset from the increased RAM to Android 8.1, out of the box, the key to arrives fully rounded and with very little to complain about. But I'm going to have a damn good try, as usual. As with the Gemini in the previous phone show, the key to is all about mindset. You'll approach every application, every service from the point of view of I've got a full keyboard and I'm damn well going to use it. No covering up of content. You see something, a username, a password, a notes field, a document for editing, and your fingers are already on the keyboard. You don't often even have to tap on the screen to start typing. You just type. I can't emphasise this point enough, and it's the reversal of the way I look at, for example, my Galaxy S9 Plus shooting the show. With that, the huge cinematic AMOLED screen is crying out for media, for gaming, and so it gets a lot of Netflix and Prime Video and YouTube, a lot of <coughs> international snooker pro HD. <laughs> and if I have to type more than a sentence on the S9 Plus, even with Google's great Gboard, it's kind of too much, and I tend to leave the operation for when I'm back at my iMac. The key to is the exact opposite. It's terrible for media consumption with its 4.5 inch 3x2 LCD screen, the wrong size, shape and technology for watching video, and not particularly good at gaming either. But hammer through some emails or WhatsApp conversations and it shows its metal. Horses for courses, as they say, it depends on what you want to do. So we have a slab of machined aluminium with oddly asymmetric corners. The top are right angles. The bottom ones are rounded, but it feels solid and utilitarian in the hand. The slightly sculpted black keys are just about perfect, as usable as they could be without going to the next size up. BlackBerry's previous passport device, of which I still want to see an Android version. The matte labelling on the keys makes them easy to see and hit, though you'll need to memorise the alt symbol since they're so faintly printed. Not that this is an issue since the key to is all about muscle memory. You'd be amazed how quickly your thumbs remember where each key is and given enough use and time where each symbol is too. And then there are the shortcut keys, which are user assignable to long presses or short presses of any key along with the dedicated speed key here, bottom right. You know the drill, speed key plus G for Gmail, speed key plus D for dial the wife, etc. And these work from any application, any screen, unlike on the key one. Above the keyboard, though, comes my main bone of contention with the BlackBerry. The key two was crying out for a 16x9 upgrade from the 3x2 display of the key one, and nothing has changed. Capacitive keys are still present, which take up room even when they're not needed, such as playing a game or watching a video. I know, I know. But even when flicking through Twitter or a website, you're still staring at a 4.5-inch display, and that's just not big enough in 2018. Yes, you can stop your fingers getting in the way by flicking up on the keyboard since the key tops are capacitive, but not having a way to minimise the navigation controls seems a huge crying wasted opportunity. Why not map a left or right swipe on the keyboard to back? Why not set a speed key shortcut to recent apps? And why not have a swipe up or speed H for home? And upgrade the 4.5 inch screen, therefore, to 5 inches with no loss in overall form factor. BlackBerry, you are killing me here. The internals, though, are up to scratch with a Snapdragon 660 and 6 gig of RAM, keeping the OS chugging, if not racing, along, and 64 or 128 gigabytes of storage plus micro SD, all surely enough for the target productivity centric market. USB Type C down the bottom is expected with quick charge 3.0 compatibility and a compact fast charger in the box. No expense spared. Plus some very decent in-ear 3.5mm headphones to go along with the headphone jack on the Key 2's top. Notice how almost every new smartphone still comes with the jack? It's because most companies actually do listen to what their users want, unlike HTC and Google. There's only the one speaker down the bottom and on the right. The other grills are fake. It pumps out enough sound for speakerphone calls, sat nav podcasts, just uh, not particularly good for media. It's fine, no complaints. 
On the back are two camera lenses, one a two times zoom effort at f over 2.6, one a regular lens at f over 1.8. And as with other phones in this configuration, the two times lens doesn't get used in low light, so keep your zooming for good light. But this is all fine. See the example photos here. It's a cracking camera arrangement for such a productivity-based device, spoiled only by the relative lack of contrast and brightness of the LCD screen outdoors in the sun, so you can't always see what you're shooting and framing. Video capture can only use the main camera, unfortunately, but then there's no OIS anywhere here, so zoomed footage would be very jerky. There is basic electronic stabilization, but it's not effective, a prime candidate for fixing in an OS update. The back is adorned only with the BlackBerry logo, meaning that the fingerprint sensor is elsewhere in the space bar on the front, as on the key one, and this works very well indeed. Perfect. If I have another bone to pick with BlackBerry, it's in their software editions, which seem to grow with every new Android release. Yes, the DTEC security checkup software is all very clever. Yes, the slide out hub functions are all very convenient, if a bit over the top for someone used to stock Android. And I'm do we actually need another widget array apart from the traditional home screens? The answer is no. And yes, the speed key shortcuts may save some serious time once you've learned what you've assigned. But all of this comes at a cost to stability, I found. During my week with the key 2, it froze solid twice and spontaneously shut down once. Now, I don't expect that kind of instability in a retail device in 2018. It's true that retail sales haven't actually started yet. That's in a day or two's time. So maybe BlackBerry has a big bug fix update about to roll out. Let's hope so. BlackBerry has been good at pushing updates in the past. In terms of bundled software, you get BBM, of course. Though, is this still a thing in 2018, even in the BlackBerry world? Hmm. BlackBerry content transfer for grabbing stuff from your phone. BlackBerry device search, finding text in any app, any file. Very handy indeed. Keep this on a speed key shortcut. BlackBerry Locker is a secure enclave for keeping critical files, a second tier of protection beyond opening the phone. BlackBerry Notable, as it sounds, is a note-taking utility. Think Samsung's S-Note with nice integration into the screenshot system in Android. BlackBerry Passport Keeper, nice and obvious. Privacy Shade turns everything dark apart from a small lit window of content under your finger. It's a nice idea and is turned off from the notifications pane. I'm not sure how many people will use it in real life. Finally, there's a really excellent FM radio application working with a plugged in headset to listen to FM radio either over the headphones or via the speaker, which is a really nice touch and a great way to save data if you want some streaming listening on a budget tariff. I feel like I've only really scratched the surface of BlackBerry's Android vision here. They add an awful lot, even if half of it won't actually be used. But then Samsung, LG and others, they all do the same, so I can't really criticise here as long as the updates keep coming. Battery life is hard to judge on the basis of a week of use, but I had no issues making it through a heavy day of testing. With no media streaming, there's no reason why the 3500 mAh battery in the Key 2 couldn't power the phone for, say, two days of regular use. It's a shame more effort wasn't put into the display and navigation system, though. That's ultimately the Achilles heel for me in terms of size and clarity. But even as it is, the key to is a worthy pick if you're more into interacting with others in your spare moments than uh, being entertained. The key to strong suit is communication, just as it was for the Blackberries of old. The QWERTY keyboard here is Blackberry's second best ever after the legendary Passport, of course. And I really enjoyed how my thumbs remembered where to land after years of thumb keyboards a decade ago. Just like riding a bike, eh? This is the Blackberry key to.